I'm Tony. He's Mike. And today we are doing 1984's uh, slapstick. Yeah, I kind of think silliness. Uh, uh, 1984's Up the Creek. Ready? Set. This is the story of America's greatest intercollegiate rafting race featuring the nation's top teams. Washington Military Institute, the champion, the seasoned veterans of Ivy College, the heavily favored women's team from Vanity U, and Lepetamine University challenging for the first time. After a rigorous training program, the race is on. Uh, give me a hard left. This river will be ours! Where's the river? Get set to get wet. Up the creek, featuring the music of Cheap Trick. Um, kind of Proto wanted to be a, a, uh, a sequel in spirit to Animal House because it's got, um, here, it's I, got, it's got, uh, Tim Matheson in it. I need a shave, bath, a cup of coffee, and a good woman. Something told him he'd come to the wrong place. It's got, uh, also Stephen Steven, first, yes. who plays, uh, got, goes, got, he was goes flounder in Animal House yeah. and, and, uh, uh, Gonzer in this one. Yeah. Then we got, uh, Dan Mooneyhan who played Pee Wee in, um, Porky's. Porky's. Yeah. Maybe dinner, some dancing? Dude! Already? <laughs> um, the other people are relatively newcomers. Sandy Helberg was a uh, part of the Groundlings. Bob, Bob, it's empty. I gotta have a drink. I don't think I can make it. You're not trying. Let me give it another shot. We have a uh, Jennifer uh, Runyon, who had a small bit part in uh, Ghostbusters prior to this. Hi. Why don't you come on in and shut the door? Why don't you lock it? Why don't you? I think I can take it from here. And then our <laughs> other kind of main star is uh, Jeff East, who plays uh, Rex. There's the woman hitter and his colleagues. Nice hair. <laughs> Whoa, I don't think he likes you. <laughs> there was one that you missed. The 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 military folks in this one. There's yeah. uh, one of the soldiers. His name is Brown who went on to have a particularly spectacular role. Yes, he was Jesse B. Goins is the actor's name. Unidentified flying asshole. And he went on to be in Clarence Boddicker's gang in RoboCop. As a matter of fact, oh. does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take us through the plot? <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so we start off at the Lepetamain, which is the worst university in the United States. And we have Dean, what the hell's his name? I don't know. It, does, it doesn't matter what his name is. Dean Birch. But anyway, the Dean <laughs> finds the four worst students in the, uh, in the university, who are also the four worst students in the United States. You are not at the bottom of the list. You are the bottom of the list. And so... We need a win for the Lepetame. They are the laughing stock of the country. This university, our university, has the reputation as the single worst educational institution in the country. That's because it is the worst educational institution in the country, sir. We need a win. We are gonna get you guys to enter in this uh, intercollegiate raft rates. And if you win, you get degrees. In whatever subject you would like. English lit. If that's what you want, providing, of course, that you win. Physics? Biochemistry, for the minor in art history. Home ec? That, that includes home ec? Yes, it does. Uh, it does. <laughs> English lit? Uh, political science? I forgot what I'll say. Name um, off. <laughs> phys, I think physics was one, and and uh, a type. I don't remember what type of biology, but I remember he mentioned it very specifically. Yeah. Um, but it does not matter. What does matter though is we got uh, two really antagonists in this one. We got uh, Rex from the Ivy League, who's got beef with Bob McGraw because uh, Rex was there with his buddies and was cheating on Heather, and Heather discovers this, and they have an altercation. Bob 
stumbles upon it. Yeah. And uh, Bob can't accept a bad breakup, but he totally had it coming. <laughs> but but anyway, so he insults Rex. Rex takes a swing at him, accidentally hits Heather. Ooh. So that's how that beef gets yeah, started. Yeah. And then uh, later in the movie, uh, the captain of the Washington Institute of whatever the military guy. Yeah, yeah, the military who, academy who, that had been for the previous three years. Yeah. I don't think I have to bore you with the fact that Washington Military Institute has won this race for the past three years. And we will win this race at any cost because the corpsman knows no such thing as defeat. Victory is the only thing he'll eat. And he'll eat it raw. And so he's going to have to sabotage the rap. Bob happens to walk into the area where he's at, so he couldn't. So the captain tries to throw the bomb away, and Bob finds it and throws it back at the guy and blows him up. Ouch! My, how time flies! You dropped this! Ah! I'm gonna get. Ooh. Who's ooh? So. Uh, the captain holds Bob responsible for them getting disqualified. So then he's on this wily coyote no. chase for he... the whole rest of the movie to try to get his revenge on Bob. It's... And 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 from there shenanigans ensue. Pretty much. I'm just gonna say, the beginning of this movie is strong. The the whole bit when they're at at college and and uh, the whole lead up where they're introducing all the characters and mm -hmm. the setup for the film, mm -hmm. all that was fun and mm -hmm. funny. And and there were parts that that I was giggling like they did. And then something happens when they get to the raft race portion of this mm -hmm. because the absurdist part that made the beginning so funny, she's kind of gone. You know, it's just it's just. Very run-of-the-mill 80s college, you know, like hot dog the movie see, and ski patrol See, the that's movie. what I liked about that, though, is they knew when to dial back the absurdity because it's still peppered throughout there because every time the captain's on screen, yeah. there's some absurd shit going on, like yeah. trying to load the uh, slingshot this giant boulder and that backfires on them. It's very wily uh, Coyote. Yeah, yeah, it's, no. it's extremely <laughs> wily Coyote. <laughs> So if you have that all throughout this movie, then it's it's too absurdist and it's too well, hokey it's, and silly. It, it's just enough hokey and silly, you know, to be proper 80s outrageous. There's a premise here mm -hmm. that a, sh well, I've seen it a million times. It should uh -huh. be fun and, and it should be a lot more fun. But big problems with this film. Okay. Um, uh, Otter is... 37 when he made this film he's pushing yeah. 40 and yeah. he's a college student <laughs> right yeah um, this this this, yeah. this is again like the second proto version of van wilder which tim matheson finally plays it, yeah. the original proto version of yeah. van wilder with otter <laughs> pretty much pretty much you've had quite a colorful career as a student mr mcgraw you managed to be suspended expelled or physically thrown out of 16 colleges and universities throughout the country You've changed your major 23 times, and your presence has been tied directly to three university presidents losing their jobs, two others being committed to sanitariums, and at least one known suicide. Have I left anything out? Just the good stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes that don't land in this, and a ton there are, of them. Yes, there um, are a lot of jokes that don't land in this movie. I'll the, agree with you there. The douchey college kids are there's a little bit too much time spent on them. And it's like, yeah, we get it. They're douchey. We can move on. We can do other things with this footage. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you're wondering why I, I called y'all here tonight, B, because I want to talk to you about herpes. That's the end of that chapter. The race itself almost seems like an afterthought, even though they set the rules up fairly well. That like the first five teams to get flags, they get to participate in day two, and then in day two, you know, the, one of those five teams will actually win. 
there's barely any racing in this, and yet that's the whole setup for this film. And it's not that I'm like, oh yeah, raft racing, how great, but it's like, you know, it's not that difficult to set up a bunch of boats in the water and, and kind of generate drama, or at least excitement, or at least funny things happening from having a bunch of boats trying to get downstream at the same time. If you've ever been on a float trip and you've had your canoe dump over on you, you, you know that it's simultaneously infuriating and hilarious. Yeah, but there's only so many times you can show that, but, though. But there's they didn't only... show it at all! <laughs> so... no, they showed that... What are you talking about? <laughs> they repaired that raft like three or four times in this fucking movie. Hey, do, well, no, no, I know they did for fact twice in this movie. <laughs> they lost that raft. Oh, they hit us with a little dart! <laughs> It's ticking! Two! One! If you have an inflatable raft and it blows up, you're not fixing it. <laughs> and then oh my go, God! You're making that. I, I you're know. making that comment in this movie I, that I, has a guy lost from a giant slingshot across the fucking river. You're, you're right about that, but there's also like there's the whole bit with the the uh, remote control plane, which was, I thought was kind of stupid. <laughs> there's a whole thing with with the the uh, motorized torpedo. <laughs> You have, okay, first off, there would be officials in any kind of race whatsoever, which there's obviously none in this one. Which, no, no, no. He's They bribed. set this up. <laughs> they paid the motherfuckers off. It didn't matter what Ivy did. The Ivy U race kit. Ooh. Hey, B. What you cannot destroy or disable, I will have my referees disqualify. <laughs> Here it is. $5,000 in hundreds, just like you requested. Huh? This movie like, okay. just did not land for me. Like I said, it started off strong. I was really kind mm -hmm. of rooting for it, and then it like veered off into the like when the whole race started and all that shit, and it's just so much of it was so unfunny, mm -hmm. so painfully unfunny, uh, that, that like by the end of this film, I just thought, eh. uh, when the dog is like the most endearing character in your film. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. I, I really did. Wow. I, I, the dog, I, dog is fun, and I, I like me a good super dog in a movie every now and then. I, I love the fact um, that the dog was learning yeah. Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> Corre, run, Jose, run. Jose no tiene su carta verde. Jose has no green card. <laughs> that like that see that's the stuff that worked for me that the dog was the reason why they had a flag because after the first four flags were done their boat was blown up and they're floating down the river downstream but the dog was smart enough to take one of the flags and wait for them to show up and give it to him and so that that all worked uh, as far as that goes um Jennifer Runyon uh the whole party like the whole ritzy party with the <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in tents was just dumb <laughs> it's called glamping now it's called glamping way. now but, but, but oh this I, is a little more high-end glamping <laughs> yeah i was gonna say they had like they had a roasted pig and they had yeah. they had maids and 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 waiters and yeah. like full what's that to do with jennifer that. runyon because that's just, how they started the no 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 i'm just i'm just saying like like all that you know, Jennifer Runyon's decided that she's not going to go to that particular party. She's going to wait and hopefully... God, what was the main character's name? Bob. 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 She's hoping Bob is going to show up. Are you okay? You know something? I really thought that McGraw had a chance. I mean, however slim, I, I really thought that he might make it. Yeah. Their, their romance... Well, well why's she going to show up with a party where her cheating boyfriend's there, getting her... This dick sucked in a hot tub. Well, well I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, the whole rest of her canoe team, you know, went to that particular party. Well, they're there for one high. reason. I'll throw the clip right here. <laughs> so, you girls here for the big race tomorrow? No, actually, we're here to get laid. <laughs> Here's what I liked about this movie, um, is there's a good sense of camaraderie between the four guys. Yeah, yeah. Between uh, Bob, Max, Irwin, and Gonzer. Here's to mediocrity. Mediocrity! Yeah. Yeah. And the dog. Because dogs, so, the dog's part of the group there. Like, I totally buy them together as a group. And they work very well together as a group, as an ensemble yeah. in that regard. Um, I did like the, the douchey ex-boyfriend. Ex um, 
he he's a douche, but and he's smug, but just the right amount of smug. He's not like overplaying the smugness. It's 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 it's, it's there and it's yeah. there enough. And I also like the fact that while Bob kind of stole his well. Bob didn't say, 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 his girl. He just showed up at the showed uh, up at the right amount of time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and capitalized on it. So after he tries to, you know, reconcile, you know, breaks, you know, busts into the room and finds them two together, he's like, all right, well, f it, that's just done, and then proceeds to the task at hand, and that's win the race at all costs. Yeah. So I like the fact that you know there wasn't that ongoing try of thing of him trying to get even with Bob, because if you had that along with the captain trying to get even with Bob, it would have been too much. I was going to say, I, I like literally think that the military guys getting the boot, once they were disqualified, they needed to be gone. The rest of the hijinks needed to happen between these three groups. The girls, the, mm -hmm. the guys from Lobotomy U, and, uh -huh. and then the, the rich douchey team. That's, mm -hmm. that's plenty. They're, you mm -hmm. don't need this fourth party that already should be not in the movie, no. you know, Continuing on because sure. none of none of that worked. None of that landed. That was like the most like, why are you still in this film other than to to make these four guys look like idiots, which they do. Yeah. They're supposed to be the team that has won for the last three years in a row, and mm -hmm. yet at the same time, they're yeah. fools. What are you sitting around for? This is no picnic, Captain. We can't win. We were disqualified yesterday. Disqualified? We're not disqualified. Not till I say we're disqualified. Um, the director who did this, uh, Robert Butler, mm -hmm. did not direct a feature film again until 1997. This this film was not terribly well received. Mm -hmm. Um, so so I'm not alone in that one. It has like a 40 percent, and reviews range from it's a passable comedy to the funniest thing about this movie is the dog. So it's not just me on that one. Funny thing. But, uh, Siskel gave this a good review. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, and I put zero stock in Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, so. well, I was going to say, put, put zero stock in Rotten Tomatoes, but Siskel also panned um, uh, Silence of the Lambs. So, I, yeah, you, yeah I, I take <laughs> take no one's word on this. this Only had, take our words when it comes to reviews. Yeah, damn it. Yeah, uh, we're the authority. This had a budget of $7 <laughs> million. It was a modest success. It made eleven million seven hundred eight thousand two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. No, that's, that's not a success. That's a flop. <laughs> I like this movie, and it's still a flop. Hey, a little popcorn. Oh, excuse me. I just spilled that. Oh, I get it, though. That's. And and so that's this feels very much like they shot exactly what was on the page, and mm -hmm. nobody ever thought, hey. You know what would make this funnier? And I, I feel that as this progresses. Because, again, the beginning of this film, so strong. And you could tell that's exactly what was written on the page. And the whole bit with the crow, where, where you know, first they throw a shoe at the crow, <laughs> and then they shoot an arrow at the crow, and then there's a shotgun, and then there's a bazooka. <laughs> that, I, that had me laughing. I buckled in at that point. I was like, yes, I'm on board. The problem is it started so strong and then just like went so off course. What's the specific moment? What's the, the specific moment was the whole bit with the gasoline. Well, they're 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 they don't have any money. They're trying oh, really? to get yeah. They're I trying like to that. get that's, gas for it. That's, that's set up for half the movie. <laughs> well, they're, they've decided that they're going to take the gas pump out of their, the RV, put it in their van, fill oh. that one up, and then stick it into the Corvette, and then the guy gets the bill of like two hundred and thirty-one dollars. Now, if that had been better put together, it would have been funnier. But that was the moment where it's like, okay, somebody didn't know how to visually tell that joke. That, that, no, that part I, stuck out to I'm, me I'm really gonna, I'm going to completely disagree with you. That, that, so. that scene was perfectly great. Because you got Irwin up front distracting the, the gas station attendant so uh, Gonzer can keep pumping the gas. Well, then you got these car full of hot chicks pull up, say, hey, fill it up. And give Gonzer money. He's like... Okay, here you go. And starts <laughs> pumping up their fucking gas. And then while he's doing that, Rex and the Ivy guys are tossing out these topless chicks. So he's getting a show on top of all this stuff. So all that works. <laughs> I just mess with me because of the end. It's like, do you want know something, Bucks? 113.37? Keep the change, pal. <laughs> ah, fuck here. Keep the change. It's not a fucking thing. That. That's gold. The, the the stuff that didn't work for me really comes down to, like you said, the uh, the military stuff. You know, from today's lens, it's it's not it's not that funny. Um, 
And when you're younger, like when I first saw this, 1984, I was like nine, ten years old. Uh, <laughs> comedy gold for me back then. Now, not so much, and I can acknowledge that. But on the whole, overall, this is still a very fun and enjoyable movie. Is there a lot of raft racing in it? No. But then again, a whole movie of them being on the water would probably get kind of boring after a while. I and mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just really enjoyed it. Um, there's a good amount of tits in it. There's a good <laughs> amount of humor in there. Not all of it lands. Um, I love the camaraderie between the guys. I buy them together as a group. Um, I like all the antagonists in the movie, short of the, the captain, which that guy, if he was like a real captain in real life, that his squad would dispose of him <laughs> in an accident during like maneuvers or some shit like that. He would be gone. Um, but yeah, for me, it's 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 fun. Um, you may dig, you may not dig it. Obviously, your there, mind yeah, there will are, vary. There are far better teen and college hijinks. Con- shit, yes, watch Man is. Wilder. I mean, it, it, <laughs> that's funnier than this. Watch Waiting. That's infinitely funnier than this. Um, I, like I said, I just I, I think an inexperienced director. Just, just didn't take advantage. It's not that it's necessarily bad material or even a bad idea for a movie. It just, it just isn't mm. executed as well as it could have yeah. been. It I, could, it could use a rewrite, re, a rewrite for sure. I, no I'm doubt. not even going to say necessarily a rewrite because the, I can say going back to that bit where they're, you know, mm-hmm. pumping gas. The funniest dialogue in that whole thing is, is well, maybe you should check the air filter. Maybe check that. And, and when, when the attendant starts getting snarky with him. Okay. Is there anything else? Gaskets? Uh, new upholstery? Retreads? Paint job? No, 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 no. I think that's about it. I think everything's okie dokie. Right, well, I don't know. Maybe you think I should check to see if you need rusting undercoat or anything like that. That, that all worked, but because it's not, it's not delivered with enough punch, it doesn't land as, as hard as it could have. That scene isn't funny. Ish. It could have been hilarious. It could have been directed and cut and trimmed much, much better. And, and again, the soul of brevity, or the small, ugh. The soul of wit is brevity, and that scene just goes on too long. And that's that's what I think is a problem with a lot of the jokes in this film, is that, well, we shot all this footage, we got to use it. So it misses on, on that mark for me. By the time that this was over with, I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's go do some research. Let's dig up some... some numbers and facts on this one. <laughs> I'm never going to watch this one again. <laughs> it's not a recommend for me. I know there's a cult for this film. I am not a member. So. <laughs> I, I enjoy this movie. It's a recommend for me. Um, not everybody's going to dig this, obviously. Um, but that's fine. Um, and that's what I got. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>